Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Before we start, a few ground rules. By default, you have joined the session in the audio mode only. Please ensure you keep yourself muted when others speak. Post your questions in the chat box at the end of the session. It will be read out and answered during the QA session. Also name the speaker if possible. In case of any help required, please use the raise hand features on the screen. Uh, so a very warm welcome to the invitees, delegates, and our esteemed distinguished session moderator, panelists, to the CII Surakshit Khadya Abhiyan and Consumer Boys World Food Day 2020 celebrations. May I have the pleasure of introducing our session moderator and panelists. Our session moderator is Mr. Ashim Sanyal, the pan uh, and he is the Chief Operating Officer and Secretary of Consumer Voice at NGO, working in the field of consumer awareness and education. He is associated with the Consumer Voice since 2007, heading the organization. Uh, in the past 25 years of the service to his current assignment, he worked in various other industries and corporates uh, as CI. CIO as well as CEO positions. As the head of the organization, he manages the consumer awareness and education working in the fields of comparative and surveillance testing, sustainability projects, advocacy, as well as food and DFSI projects. He is a full member of the Consumers International and International Consumer Research and Testing, besides managing relationships with ISO, WHO, Codex, UNATO, World Bank, and others. He also works very closely with the ministries like the Consumer Affairs, Food, Health, Food Processing, Corporate Affairs, HRD, besides representing boys in standardization bodies like DIS, VE, QCI, and others. He also represents the consumer boys in the regulatory bodies like FSSI, TRI, SEBI, RBI, IRDA, etc. He is also a member of the various business forums like CII and Asuchin and others. Dr. Rubina. She's a medical doctor with master's degree in public health from the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. She's also a doctor. She also has a doctorate degree uh, in clinical microbiology. Dr. Rubida has a technical and administrative experience of more than 22 years in public health sector and food safety. And she has a number of research publications and books to her credit. She's a fellow international Ford Fellowship Program and also a member of the Indian Public Health Association. Currently, she works as the technical director with Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, FSSCI, since the last five years. Dr. Jagmeet Madan, the National President, Indian Dietic Association, Principal and Professor, Sir Vithal Das Thakur State College of Home Science, SNTT, Women's University, Mumbai. She's a member, National Registered Dietitian Board member, uh, uh, and uh, she's the India representative of Asian Federation of Dietic, Dietic Association, <clears throat> member International Confederation of Dietic Association, uh, and also expert FSSI scientific panels on labeling and claims and advertisement. She's the expert FSSI scientific panel of nutrition fortification as well. Chef Manjit Singhal. He wears many leadership hats beyond the four walls of the hotel group. As president of Indian Federation of Culinary Associations, Chef Gill was instrumental in getting the Indian culinary tradition and the artists behind it, the chef's recognition and laurels of the Global Forum of Chefs. Dr. Prabodh Halde, Head Regulations, Marico Limited, is also the past president of Association of Food Scientists and Technologists of India. Uh, he's from CFTRI uh, uh, India, CFTRI Mysore, and a, a renowned food technologist with a well-rounded multidisciplinary experience. He is the executive committee member of CFNDAI and SEA India. He is currently working in Mariko as head regulatory at r &T. Prabodh has 25 years of uh, industrial experience. He is in the Central Advisory Member of FSSI um, uh, as a representative of the food industry and has several publications to his credit. 
he has started various innovative programs in EFST. Uh, that is like the project Ashirvad, project Abhishkar, project Power Talk, and project Parampara. All these programs are now popular at the national level. Mr. Devendra Yadav. Mr. Devendra Yadav, he is currently working as the Vice President and Corporate Head, Politics and Safety and Regulatory with Jibran Foodworks Limited. He comes with more than 25 years of experience in quality assurance, function, regulatory affairs, and operation processes in the FMCG industry, including food, as well as in the personal care, retail industry, and QSR sector. Mr. Biprabhu Chatterjee, Head R&D, Adani Vilma. He's an MSc of Food Technology, CFTRI Mysore. He has a diversified and a rich experience where he worked for the Union Ministry of Food and Civil Supplies between 1982 and 1993. And then onwards, he moved to the industry. Now, that was uh, the introduction I could make about the, the panelists and our session moderator. For those who have joined the World Food Day celebrations for the first time, here is a very short brief on the context. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, was established on 16th October in 1945 to commemorate the day. World Food Day is celebrated every year with a new theme aimed at promoting worldwide awareness and actions on global concern areas related to malnutrition, hunger, food security, and the likes of it. CII has been celebrating World Food Day since 2010. In the very first year, we collaborated with IRCTC, academia, and industry to organize walkathons, poster competitions, quiz contests in Delhi, and distribute booklets and posters in the Rajthani and the long distance trains and the railway based kitchens as well. Consumer Voice has been one of our founder members when launching the Pan India CII Surakshit Khadya Aviyan initiative in 2015. Now look at the World Food Day, Food Day theme this year. It is Grow, Nourish, Sustain Together. Basically, our actions are our future. Countries, food chain industry, R&D, academia, and civil society need to make sure that our food systems grow a variety of food to nourish a growing population and sustain the planet together. An essential part of the response to the COVID-19 pandemic is also to preserve access to safe and nutrition food for all. We all have a role to play from increasing the overall demand for nutritious food by choosing healthy with sustainable habits despite these uncertain times. And now, respected invitees, panelists, ladies and gentlemen, we will have the CII Surakshit Khadya Abhiyan Consumer Voice World Food Day 2020 Pledge Taking Ceremony. Panelists are requested to switch on their video cameras, please, so that we may record it through the screenshot. Others may please keep your hands raised by clicking on the raise hand option during the entire duration of pledge taking to also ensure that your microphones remain muted. May I now have the pleasure of inviting Mr. Ashim Shanyal to lead the World Food Day pledge taking ceremony on behalf of CII SK and Consumer Voice. Over to you, Mr. Shanda. Thank you, Indran. Uh, I hope I am audible and I'm clear to everybody. A uh, warm welcome to all participants, uh, panelists, and uh, this world food pledge taking ceremony. In fact, I would request all to read it out and raise your hands simultaneously as I do on behalf of CII. Surakshit Khadya Bhyan and Consumer Voice. Today, on World Food Day, I solemnly pledge to collaborate and strengthen nationwide actions on promoting growth, nourishment, and sustenance towards a healthy and safe 
food ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Shannal, for doing the honors. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much too. You may now lower your hands. Over to you, Mr. Shannal, to now moderate the much-awaited panel discussion on reducing non-communicable disease burden by eliminating trans fat. Thank you, Indrani, once again, and uh, <clears throat> a warm welcome to our panelists and uh, to all <clears throat> who are registered for this webinar. It is an imp important day, as we know, since morning, we have been having a lot of webinars. Uh, uh, in the webinar of FSSAI in the afternoon today, we did hear about trans fats from WHO replace, which is a continuation of the program that we did last year on trans fat and el elimination. Steam of grow, nourish, sustain together is something which is embedded in our safe food system approach where all the stakeholders jointly are responsible for making it happen. This is not an overnight journey. This is something that will take years to happen. But the very thought that comes to our mind is a decade back, we never talk, talked about nutrition. We not, never talked about food safety. We never talked about Nourishment, we never talked about diets, we never talked about infancy problems in terms of dietary restrictions, we never talked in terms of food fraud. Now we only do, along with many other things. So this is the first sign of growth for a developing country like India. And we take this opportunity to gather a number of renowned specialists of their areas, and industry specialists who have today agreed to join us for this particular session on reducing non-communicable disease burden by eliminating trans fats. As we all know, trans fats have been embedded in our food system for a very long time, and the struggle to eliminate trans fats is on for the last almost 12, 13 years, at least by consumer voice. The health harms of trans fats today was repeated by WHO representatives to get replaced program in the FSSAI meet. And we will literally continue from there in terms of carrying forward this mission through people who are well versed with the subject. And I must here say that consumers are not well versed with trans fats. And that is a major concern that Consumer Voice has, and that is why all these collaborative efforts and choosing of important days for uh, earmarking this particular flagship pro program that we are carrying on, along with Storekshit, Khadiya, Bian, CII, FSSAI, and a lot of other stakeholders. I would love to see this kind of a gathering in any occasion. And today I'm so thrilled to, as a moderator, to have so many renowned personalities on this webinar. And I'm choosing to start with my first question with, uh, to <clears throat> Dr. Jagjit Madan. Everybody heard about her background, no need for any introduction. My, before I ask her the question, my only request to the panelists is basically to stick to a five minutes limit max for each question that uh, reply that you give so that we can have at least two or three rounds within the given time. Uh, Dr. Madan, uh, <clears throat> an old friend of mine, and uh, we have been uh, dealing with this particular subject of trans fats for a very long time. My first question to you is basically that uh, now that we know that uh, globally that uh, the health harms of trans fat, as a dietitian and as a clinical subject specialist, what are your major concerns regarding consume, consuming foods with trans fats? And is there a special distinction between children and adults for uh, this particular consumption health harms? Will the curb help control non-communicable diseases? Over to you, Dr. Madan. And my request again to all, please stick to the five minutes limit for the first question. 
Can we have your voice, Dr. Madan? Yeah. A very good afternoon to one and all. Uh, at the outset, uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Sanyal, for making me a part of this. Uh, thank you, Dr. Indrani Ghosh, uh, CII, and all voice, uh, consumer voice, uh, Face, Surakshit, Khadi Abhiyan, FSSCI, uh, a very, very uh, rounded collaboration of all important stakeholders coming together. And uh, it's, uh, it's really a pleasure to be a part of this panel, uh, wherein I have so many of my colleagues uh, who are here to uh, share our thoughts on a very, very important topic. Uh, so to set the context, uh, you know, right at the beginning, uh, what uh, Mr. Sanyal has asked me, that yes, today we all know the uh, ill effects of trans fat, uh, but what exactly and how is it impacting our health and especially from a nutritionist perspective? Uh, I would like to uh, share a couple of points. Uh, we have been in our capital for heart disease and for diabetes for a long time. But what worries me today the most as a nutritionist is that in present times, you know, the concern of metabolic health, the concern of uh, pre-diabetes, diabetes and coronary heart disease has come down to our younger adolescents and younger adults. So if this is our young India, you know, uh, and which is uh, like I have some recent data to share that uh, after screening 1,300 uh, uh, adolescents and young adults in the age group of 16 to 25 years, we find, you know, more than 30% of them, this is just the recent data in the city of Mumbai, more than 30% of them at risk to prediabetes. And they are absolutely normal to look at, normal BMI, low BMI. But what really uh, is a worrisome factor is when you look at their dietary pattern, they are heavily dependent on snacks, uh, which are laden with uh, high fat, salt, and sugar kind of foods. And the biggest culprit there uh, is the uh, quality of fat and the quality of uh, refined sugars and refined carbohydrates which form a part of it. So my concern is that, uh, you know, the over dependence on uh, uh, such snacking options, uh, you know, completely missing out the concept of meals uh, so far as this part of the population is concerned, and this is 50% of India's population. So uh, I think that is where we need to worry about uh, this uh, uh, component, uh, you know, in the food and uh, completely eliminate it and bring uh, wholesome options, uh, especially for uh, this population of India. That's my concern. Thank you, Dr. Madan, for your opening uh, statement. In fact, uh, a real cause of concern and uh, 